This video is about one of the darkest and most atmospheric dungeons in the world of Warcraft. Behind its menacing and cryptic veneer lie deeper secrets that extend beyond its walls. This video is about Skolomance. Hello, and welcome to Archvelda's Hacks with Archvelda and his amazing hacks. The origins of Skolomance go back way further than the world of Warcraft or video games or even modern fantasy fiction. The word Skolomance itself clearly derived from the word scholar or student, one who studies, and Mance referring to magic. But Skolomance originally was no Harry Potter Disneyfied school of wizards. It was an altogether darker place run by the devil himself. As in the Warcraft version, the original Skolomance was underground in the middle of a lake in Transylvania. The students did not set eyes on the sun for seven years. In exchange, they were given great power and became agents of darkness. The story of Skolomance almost literally bled into the legend of Dracula when Bram Stoker took an interest in the subject. In World of Warcraft, Skolomance is a uniquely atmospheric dungeon, immersive and compelling. It turns out that there is an inexplicable and eldritch mystery surrounding the unique atmosphere of Skolomance, and the instance is shrouded in an illusion worthy of Jandi Sparoff herself. First, there is the question of where exactly is Skolomance. Now, that might seem obvious. After all, the instance portal is located in the Western Plaguelands. Also, if you broke out of the original pre-mists of Pandaria Skolomance, then you'd be in an instanced, empty version of the Western Plaguelands. And if you make your way through to the chamber in which we first encounter Lillian Voss, there's a clear view to the right of the Western Plaguelands. But Skolomance is not actually in the Western Plaguelands. There's two ways to confirm this. First, and most simply, use a shaman. The Shaman's far side ability penetrates not only space, but solid physical barriers, and allows you to see the true nature of any instance. And as you can see here, we can use it to look through the instance portal without being transported back into the open world of Azeroth. And if you're familiar with the region, it will become instantly obvious that we are not in any recognisable form of the Western Plaguelands. If you use Far Sight to look at the instance from above, you notice that the entire place is bathed in an extraordinary amount of pink, which is what gives Skolomance its distinctive ambience. Now we can physically break out of the instance, and it turns out there are two ways to do this. The first way was discovered by a YouTuber whose channel is simply called Wow Exploration. And this method involves simply jumping across from this staircase into the hollow opposite. Now this can be done by any class who has an enhanced jump ability. In the original video it was a hunter, I'm using a shaman here. It would actually be a lot easier with a demon hunter. Uh, but I used shaman with gust of wind and found myself falling short. So I used the freeze macro from my top 10 macros video that you may have seen recently. If you haven't seen it already, there's a link to the exact point of the video where I discuss the freeze macro in the description below. Once in the hollow, you can use an elixir of giant growth or other size increase method and then log out or DC. Log back in and the head of your character should be outside the instance. You can then jump across and right outside the dungeon. Once there, you get a view of this weird panorama of shattered terrain. And there's something very strange here. A huge pink arrow stretching out across space. That you may have noticed earlier during the far side exploration. Now it is tempting to just jump on the arrow to see what happens. But it is very easy to fall back into the instance if you do that. Nothing is what it seems here and you can't trust your eyes. Using this car toy to avoid a fall, you can see that the arrow lies across the actual instance itself and appears to be the source of Skolomance's distinctive rose-coloured ambience. 
If you don't have a class with a jumping ability, there's an alternative escape method developed by a guy called Shunt1900, which any class can use. You just go to the end of the instance and go right at the top of the stairs, and then jump into this space above the stone coffin, again using the elixir of giant growth trick, then jumping outside the instance as before. You might want to use some kind of slow fall here, as it's quite a drop. And this will send you into this sheer shiny space, and you can make your way into this uncanny jagged pool of water. First it seems like you're flying. Water tends to glitch out in the forbidden areas of dungeons. The hollow mountainous area in front of us here is where Scholomance proper is located. It doesn't project from the outside. The outside of Scholomance holds one more unusual property. At the very edge of the map, you can no longer move. It's as if you are falling while stuck in the same position. This persists for about 30 seconds before you disconnect. It is a unique visual effect I cannot recall seeing in the world or in another dungeon raid instance, though it has some similarity to the preloading effect you sometimes get when disembarking from a flight master's mount in world. Returning to the instance itself, have you ever wondered what lay behind the areas that are permanently gated off? It is not easy to get into these areas physically, though not impossible either, but it is trivial to do so with Farsight. And we can see from the inside that these areas are hanging, suspended in space, surrounded by the same mysterious pink Leave ether that shrouds the instance. Alone. Please. In the Butcher's Sanctum, if you look upward, you can see a level of interesting detail above you. But when you attempt to view the area with Farsight, you find this is another illusion. This area was never designed to be viewed from above, and presumably to save memory does not render at all. Finally, you may wonder how we can see the Western Plague Lands from the Chamber of Summoning, the room in which we first encounter Lillian Voss. Yet we've been outside the instance, and clearly we are not in any recognisable version of the Western Plague Lands. It turns out that the truth about this mystery is located in an even stranger illusion. Again, using Farsight, we can penetrate through the gate, and it will take a few tries, as there seem to be multiple invisible walls in the way. You can see that this is actually a two-dimensional painting, curved at the edges with multiple layers, designed only to fool players in the instance, from the only angle at which the picture can be viewed. And yet this brings only more questions. Why is the outside of Scholomance not in the Western Plaguelands at all when its predecessor was? Why does it hang in the air in the middle of a mountain? What odd design choices left such a linear, organised dungeon in such a chaotic and unstructured environment? Two videos were incredibly useful to me in the making of this video. The first one is Haven Games' The Evolution of Scholomance. The second was by Wizard Trocair, who was the first person to discover the two-dimensional painting outside Scholomance and I'd recommend you have a look at his video Flight of the Wizard, which is one of, if not actually the best Warcraft exploration video ever recorded. So there's the video. If you liked it, why not subscribe? And if you really liked it, why not consider joining my Patreon feed where I publish all my naughtiest secrets. Thanks for watching, this has been Archvelder. It's like I'm Irish dancing while stoned. <laughs>